Uh, hi YouTube, this is my uh, portable sun tracking solar panel setup and uh, I've got a lot of great information off YouTube over the years, how to fix my car, how to fix my dryer, uh, how to make stuff, uh, so I thought I'd pay it back by showing this off. There's a lot of information on YouTube about solar panels. Uh, and there's also some information about sun tracking devices, but there's no real good information about a do-it-yourself sun tracking device for a solar panel. First of all, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the solar panel itself. Um, this happens to be a Renogy solar panel. You can Google that, R-E-N-O-G-Y. They uh, seem to have the best value as far as I can tell. Sell you a package deal. There's a lot of information about how to hook those up. That's not particularly complicated. Uh, what's uh, special about this unit is the mechanism I came up with. Very low cost, and you'll see very crude do-it-yourself mechanism to track the sun across the sky, uh, involving a lot of junk that was in my basement, homemade parts and that sort of thing. So let's take a closer look. So first of all, we have to have something this solar panel can be mounted on that'll turn. I told you this is basement junk. It's actually the bottom of an office chair, which you can see here. Got that for free, a real strong bearing. I figured if it could hold up a 200 pound guy in the office every day, it could hold a 30 pound mechanism or whatever this is. I've got a, um, this is the sensor that tells the solar panel to move, which it just did, and I'll get more on that later. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the mechanics for now. So this is an arm that's built here with a push rod, a little bearing. This arm is driven by uh, this um, shuttle, this moving object. It's just two nuts on this threaded shaft. You see it's hooked up by this crudely soldered piece that I fabricated here. As the motor turns, the, uh, this shuttle moves along the shaft, it pushes this rod. And let's see if I can demonstrate that in just a second. This rod, by the way, is turned by a, a 12 volt, 14 volt DC motor. DC is important because you have to be able to reverse the polarity to make the motor go backwards. Where do you get one? Well, you get one out of an old discarded drill. You can actually get these at Goodwill for a few bucks. The nice thing about it is you just put the threaded rod right in the chuck of the drill and you've got a built-in transmission. Of course, we cut off the battery cable and hook the power directly straight, straight to the Straight to the motor. Um, this shiny metal piece on top is just a guide. You can see there's a little guide up here. This is just a part I grabbed off an old laser printer and off an old inkjet printer. It just keeps it all straight and aligned as it travels along. So let's see if I can make it go here. Let me see. It goes along and it goes and it moves the solar panel. Now the other thing you'll notice here is a limit switch so that when the motor is delivered, when the power is delivered to the motor, if this should if this should come back too far beyond the limit, it would trip that switch. That's downstream just above the motor. It'll, it's hardwired to take the power away from the motor. Very important during setup and experimentation. I've got another one up here, it does the same thing. So if the shuttle hits that, it'll cut the power. Now, I also have a switch back here that lets this uh, computer know that the shuttle has returned all the way to the back and this is the east position. And there it goes and I'll talk more about that later. And then I've also got a few things on here for weatherproofing. I would not want any water to collect and run down the shaft and drip into the transmission. So this is here and I've got a few other pieces that would let the water run off. All this is mounted to a flexible piece that moves up and down. Actually I've just got one screw in here the way I set it up temporarily, but you could put multiple screws in here and adjust this so that this will twist up and down according to what time of year it is. So when the, we're here in Wisconsin, the sun gets very low in the sky in the winter. You can mount it so it's pointed almost, uh, well, pointed horizontal or vertical, <laughs> depending how you look at it. And then in the summertime, the sun's about 73 degrees overhead, so you can tip it, tip this whole panel way back so it's tracking the sun across the sky. And you would just want to change that, oh, I don't know, six, eight, ten times per year. These things on the front, again, these crude structures are just to keep the, the light detector from getting 
fooled at sunset or at sunrise um, because the panel has a hard time tracking uh, the sun when it's just coming up. Um, this is uh, very important. This is sort of the brains of the operation, and I think you can see here there's two photoresistors, one on the west and a sheet of metal, and then one on the east. The whole concept of this, the way it tracks the sun, is that as the sun tracks across the sky, it'll cast a shadow on the east photoresistor, and it'll actually reflect off and put more brightness on the west photoresistor. The motor is controlled by a little computer called an Arduino, and that computer will read the values coming from these photoresistors. You can buy these, by the way, at Radio Shack for a couple of bucks. Back to the uh, electric part. Solar panel gathers the electricity. This is this white sheet is just weatherproofing here. This is a counterweight to counterbalance to help it move easier. The power comes down to uh, this device, which is called the charge controller. Again, that's sold by Reno G. You get a kit when you buy your panel. This is sort of like a battery charger. You can't just dump raw power into your battery. This is a deep cycle 12 volt battery. Got that at Walmart for about 90 bucks. Um, so the power comes from the solar panel into the charge controller. The charge controller sends the power to the battery in the most efficient way to keep the battery charged. And then the charge controller takes power off the battery to feed whatever load you want. Now you could put a 12 volt load on here and there are obviously lights and little miniature refrigerators and things for the RV industry that run on 12 volts. I choose to run mine uh, on 110 volts so we need this, this thing called an inverter. Again, it's Walmart, I don't know, 60 bucks or something. It just takes 12 volt power and converts it to 110 volts alternating current. So I cannibalized some of the power off the system to run the little computer up here and to run the motor. That's using power off the system. Could I hook it directly to the battery, run it 12 volt? Yeah, I could. It's a little simpler for demonstration purposes to do it this way. And then the other power is just regular 110 volt electricity. So there's my little fluorescent lamp. This will give uh, 650, uh, 750 watts. So you could run, that's about half of a circuit in a house. So you could run a TV, certainly charge cell phones, laptops, run a couple of lights like that. You would not be able to run a uh, microwave or a blow dryer certainly not an air conditioner or anything that takes a lot of juice. Um, this is the brains of the operation. So I'm going to cover this more in another video, but this is a little computer called an Arduino. This is about $20. This is a readout screen. That's another $16 that um, you don't really need. I just had it on here so I could figure out how to make all this work. And these are relays, and these take the power and deliver it to the motor so the computer these, are, these relays are switches, and the computer tells the switches when to go on and when to go off to drive the motor, and the motor will go forward and backward. So right now, we'll take a better look at this later, but you see the east sensor is giving me a reading of 673, and the west sensor is giving me a reading of 716. When the difference between east and west reaches 50, this will say condition 1, and it'll energize these relays to send power to the motor to make this turn, to make this shuttle move, to push on the push rod, to push the bottom of the chair over, to turn the solar panel until the sensor uh, is pointed back at the sun. The computer continuously monitors these and uh, it will realize that it's pointing directly at the sun the little computer will turn off the relays and stop the power to the motor. Uh, the other thing um, I want to mention is that this unit is uh, able to be taken apart, so it's somewhat portable. Uh, it will be perfect for base camp. Uh, you could fit it into the back of a large single-engine airplane, uh, certainly a truck, a large boat. It wouldn't be good for a permanent installation because it couldn't, it's not really designed to handle high wind. Um, but for a uh, semi-permanent installation in a, in a base camp, uh, it would be perfect. And I'm going to see if I can use the uh, 
time-lapse feature on my iPhone here to uh, show how I take it apart. That's it. Thanks for watching.